Amen. We are in a series on financial freedom, and uh, we've been talking about, last week we talked about, last week we talked about uh, being free, amen? We talked about being ready for the next emergency, amen? Is that what we, not t- is that what we talked about? We talked about the fact that an emergency can happen to any one of us, but the but the, the key thing is that we have to be ready for the next emergency. Amen? Oftentimes, we're not ready for the emergency when it happens in our lives. Last week, I told you that if you have the peace of God, y'all remember me talking about that? If you have the peace of God, you don't have to worry, amen, about, about anything, especially when it comes down to money. Now, I'm going to ask a question, and I'm hoping tonight that I'm going to get a good response. Amen? How many of you last week went home and you did the budget? The quickie budget. All right. Give God a hand clap of praise for that. All right. So who did the quickie budget? Come on. Give him a hand, y'all. Amen. The quickie budget. Listen, I want to congratulate you on taking the first step to freedom. The first step to freedom is the fact that you have taken that move. Amen. You've taken the step that you are going to do. Amen. What is necessary. Amen. uh, To win. Now, let me tell you what a budget is. A budget is telling your money where to go. Come on, somebody. A budget also is a good indicator of where you've been spending it. All right? Amen. Not just telling it where to go but where the money is going. Amen. That's what the budget does. The budget gives you and I a picture. All right? Because most of us are not, most of us, we know about the budget. I mean, we got it in our head, right? We got it in our head, and we're like, oh, yeah, I got it in my head. I can can do, you know, I can do this. I know how much money I have, but let me say this to you. There's nothing like, there's nothing, absolutely nothing like you having, amen, a a snapshot, amen, a picture as to where your finances are going. Are y'all with me? Amen. So I want to tell you something. I want to ask a question now. What was your reaction? Some of you, you can answer. What was your reaction to last week's message. Anybody? Anybody want to chime in? You can. Amen. What was your what was your reaction to last week's message? Anybody want to chime in? You can. I love to get I like to get feedback. Amen. Give me some feedback. Let me know what if I'm heading in the right direction. Amen. Tell me. Anybody? Amen. What was your reaction to last week's message? All right, that's very good. That I that I worry about money too much, and last week we said that we spend so much time. Listen, I told you, master the money. Don't let the ma- money master you. Am I right about it? Okay, and and that's important, right? And so you got to catch yourself when you find yourself consumed, because Paul says, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely meditate on those things. And when you meditate on those things and you have the peace of God, you can be content in any and every situation and you don't have to worry about nothing. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. Anybody else? Come on. Anybody else? Anybody else tonight? Go ahead. How to manage your money better. Okay. All right. I'll take that. Anybody else? Huh? Peace, right. 
Now that you brought it to the light, right? Because it's something that we talk about, something that we think about. But what Satan wants to do is he wants our minds to be consumed with the wrong things. And let me tell you something. Whenever you decide to do right, you got to be ready because evil is present at every corner. But here's the thing. What are you going to do? Are you going to give in or are you going to fight? And our weapons, the Bible say, is not carnal. Our weapons, the way we fight is through prayer. The way we fight is we put it in the Lord's hands. I know what man may say, but you have to have a made up mind that no matter what it sounds like, no matter what it looks like right now, that you and I, we're going to be more than overcomers. Come on, help me somebody. Amen. And being more of an overcomer means that you're willing to grab the bull by the horn and say, come on, let's ride, baby, ride. Amen. Amen. Because listen, the enemy is the only one. Listen, whenever you try to organize your life, let me help somebody. Whenever you try to get this part of your life right, you got to believe it will come with resistance because, and another thing too, remember you've been doing this thing like this for a long time. And, and so change becomes the problem with most of us in our finances. Come on and help me say amen tonight. What becomes the issue? Change becomes the issue when it comes down to finances because we've been doing it a certain way for so long that, listen, we think we've grown. And watch this. And I, wanna, I want you to ask yourself a question. How is that working out for you? There's nothing like having financial peace, but also having a peace of mind. I want you to go to last week's handout, and I want you to go to the checklist, page two. I want you to look at the checklist. Now, this is the stuff that we're going to deal with, the checklist. All right? First, we're going to start off with the baby steps. All right? Now, what was the baby steps that I gave you last week? Baby step number one. All right? Track your daily spending on the non-essentials. Who did it? Who did it? Okay, let me ask a question, if you don't mind. Do you mind? How much did you spend in a week? Come back to it. Come back to it. Who, who, who tallied it up? Who told it up? Who, who told it up? Who tallied it up? Anybody? All right. Well, why are you tallying? Now, see, here's what I want to say, y'all. If I'm giving you the keys, you got to start the call. See, because if it's falling on deaf ears and you're still struggling financially a month from now, a week from now, a year from now, if your life is still the same financially, it's not going to be because you didn't have the right information. It's because possibly you didn't apply what you learned. Okay, so if you didn't track your receipt spending this week, I need you to do that for me. I'm not going to ask you. It's a volunteer. I just want to just going to get an idea of what we spend on the non-essentials all week long. Amen. All right. Some of you ate out. <laughs> Amen. You, it wasn't in the budget, but you ate out. Okay, you got yours? Did you tally it up? Can you tally it up? Tally it up for me. Cause I, and I really need somebody to do that for me. Go ahead. 60 bucks. Look at that, right? 60 bucks that wasn't in the budget. Now do that times four. What do you have? How much? $240. So you take that times 12. Okay, and that's money you say, where's my money going? $60 on, on, you know, stuff you could have done without. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
But, but that's good. That's good. That's that's good. That's a good discipline. Okay, good. So you won this week. All right, take that in the win column. Okay, in the win column. All right, so sixty bucks. St- Listen, my wife said we finna. Eat a- I said, uh, uh-uh, uh, we finna do that. We money managing, baby. And guess how much I spent this week? Zero. Zero. I ate at home. I drank water on the nonage. I put gas. I- that's all I did. I did not do it. In other words, I had the discipline. Now, I should, now all that, all that's part of my budget. Gas in the car, all that, that's in my budget. I'm talking about stuff we stop by the store and get that we didn't even plan for. Go ahead, what's your number? How much? $86. Now, I understand all of that, but it wasn't in your budget. It was just swipe, 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 swipe. Now watch this. Watch this. Just think about that. That's this week. But if you were to really gauge this thing every single week, and at the end of the month, I want you to get me that grand total. And watch this. And you're saying, oh, well, I need tires for my car, but I can't get it. The reason I can't get it, because I just spent 86 today. All right, next week I may spend 125. Next week I may spend 60. And then if you were to take that money... Right? If you were to say, okay, if I'm if I have blow money, which I'll get to the I'll get to the to the uh envelope system in a minute, okay? But but before I do it, so that's baby step number one. Baby well baby step number one really is to get a thousand dollar emergency fund. How many of you have started your emergency fund? How many have the thousand dollars set up? Amen. All right. How many of you started the emergency fund? Let me see if you started. Now, here's what's ironic. I read an article on Sunday morning. Alert came on my phone. It says that the average American cannot afford a $400 emergency. I said, what great timing. I am teaching on financial management, and I told you to put up a, or start working on, okay, start working on putting up a $1,000, right, a $1,000 emergency fund so that you can be prepared for the next emergency. And then the article came out, says that the average person can't even cover a $400 emergency. Now, is that deep? I think it's deep to me because here's the thing. If I can't cover a four, if I cannot cover a $400 emergency, amen, then something is wrong in my life. Listen, how can we live like that? And, and how many know emergencies will happen? How many know it will happen? Amen. It will happen. And when it happens, you have to be what? Ready. So the, 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 the checklist is this. We're going to do the baby steps. We're going to go to our reading assignments. All right. We're going to go to the envelope system, which I'll show you how to organize the envelope system. We're going to do the quickie budget. Then we'll do a monthly budget. Then we need a buddy system. You know what the buddy system is? Don't do it alone. Have somebody to keep you accountable. Hey, how you doing on your emergency fund? You don't have to tell me how much you got. See, I believe, saints, that if you don't take this teaching to heart, amen, you're not going to win. And, and I'm, I'm seeing something here tonight. Amen. I know you had a long weekend. But you got to roll up your sleeves and you got to ask yourself a question because some of us are stressed out financially. We are stressed out financially and guess what? We are struggling. Come on, y'all. If I ask, if I ask you, amen. Now we're short for our revival right now. Okay? I'll tell you how much we're short. We're short $2,000. Do you think I can raise that tonight? 
So anybody want to write me a couple checks tonight? We need we need two thousand dollars for this revival. See how y'all looking at me? But see, watch this. But if you had envelopes and you had savings and you had stuff put up, you could say, Pastor, I'll write the first check. I'll write the first check because I know revival is going to benefit me. It's going to benefit my spiritual life. And I know some of you have already given you what you, we've asked. But here's what I'm saying to you. See, you want to be free so you can do whatever you want to do, when you want to do it, and how you want to do it. That's what freedom is. You with me? Amen. Then the next thing is accountability, financial snapshot, and giving. Now, let's talk about the foundational principles of dealing with money. All right? Y'all with me? All right. Now, how many of you know the definition of steward, what the definition of stewardship is? What is a steward? A house manager or a manager, right? A steward is one who administers the goods of another. In other words, he is the manager of the household of somebody else. In other words, he manages somebody else's stuff. He does not manage his own stuff. Wh whose stuff does he manage? He manages somebody else's stuff. Can I ask you a question? What do you, what do you own? Huh? That was not given to you by God. Everything you have belongs to God, and you and I are just a steward over it. Do I have a witness? And here's the thing. I want to win with my finances, so the first thing I have to get in my mind is that I am a steward. But here's the reason why a lot of people are not winning with money, because they have not developed wisdom. Are you with me? Watch this. One of the things I want you to start asking God for is start asking God for wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom in how to handle the finances that you put into my hands. Do I have a witness? Now watch this. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 8 for me. While you're going there, I want to show you something. Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'm so excited about this. I want to go so many places. You don't understand how I feel about this type of teaching here, y'all. I want to welcome all our guests tonight. Thank you so much for visiting with us. Amen. Look what he says. It says, but you shall what? But you should what? 8.18. Go ahead. But you shall remember what? For what? Huh? For it is who? It is he who is giving what? You what? Power. Now, let me tell you what that word power means. That word power has to do with strength. God is the one that wakes you up every day and he gives you the strength. He gives you the ability. He gives you the might. It says, watch what it says. And here's what I want to say to somebody here tonight. You have to start remembering God when you out there trying to make some money. Come on and help me somebody. Perfect, Sister Hunt. Watch this. You have to do what? You have to remember who. See, here's the, here's the point, y'all. Oftentimes, we don't include God in our money. 
And remember this, the way you handle money, watch this, tells about your character. It's a character issue. I'm, I'm going to say it one more. Let me, let me see. Let me see. It's a what kind of issue? It's a character issue. If you're a hoarder, here's the thing. I know people who will spend money on all kinds of non-essentials, but when it comes down to church, all they'll give is $5. Character. I can spend money on all kinds of other things, but the thing that I got to remember when I'm dealing with finances is this. God is the one that owns it all. Do you have, do I have a witness? Watch this. He says, uh, this is Deuteronomy 8, 8 and 18. He says, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth. That he may what? Confirm his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Verse 19. It shall come about. If you ever forget, same context. Can I ask you something? Have you forgotten God in your fi- in, in your financial dealings? Because if we for- now, here's the thing. Now, here's how you know if you've forgotten Him. Amen. If you don't do. Amen. If you don't manage it, I'm not just talking, you thought I was going to say, because you don't give to the church. Yeah, I get it. I understand where you're going with that. I'm talking about every time you make some money, you got to remember the Lord. Lord, I thank you. Every time you get that direct deposit, Lord, I thank you. I didn't have it before, but I have it now. And here's the thing, just like I asked you to take your receipts this week, right? One person said they spent a certain amount. The other person said they spent a certain amount. Watch this. Now, think about that. Think about how valuable of a thing you dealt with, but you could have used that for something that you really needed. And this is what I want to ask you. This is what I want you to do. Whenever you stop at the store and you make a purchase, I want you to ask yourself a question. Do I really, really, really need it? Do you know how many times I did that last week? I pulled up in front of all these. I said, no, nope, I'm going home. <laughs> I did. I pulled in the parking lot. I said, you know what? I don't, I, and, and this happened. I said, you know what? I don't really need that. Because I, I have a plan and my plan is to build back up my emergency fund because I just had some emergencies. I had several emergencies, but I was ready for I wasn't, I had a peace of mind when the emergency came. Because why? Because I had a $1,000 emergency fund set up, envelope set up at my house. And guess what? When that emergency came, I smiled. I rested in the Lord. Right? So that's baby step one. Find out, amen, where you're falling short, but find out where your money is going. That's what the budget is for. Look what he says. It shall come about if you ever forget the Lord your God and go after other gods. Now watch this. In the pursuit of finding or or gaining wealth, that's exactly what we do. We're running after other gods. What he says. He says you go after God, other gods and serve them. You're working day and night. I told you, I told you Sunday. If you serve God, and if you're faithful in your giving, and if you trust God, if you manage, and if you budget, when you're sleeping, he's going to give you money. He says he gives to his beloved. A lot of us have not experienced that. Some of us have. I've experienced that. In my sleep, God was giving me money. I didn't have to work that hard, Bruce. I didn't have to struggle that hard because you know what? Everything belongs to him. 
He's given me the power to get wealth. And so if he's given me the power to get wealth, then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to trust him. Amen. And I'm going to turn it all over. I'm turning these bills over to him. I'm going to turn this house over to him. I'm going to turn it. Listen, there's something about not enjoying what you have. And the reason we can't enjoy it is because we're not serving him. Ah. We have to serve him. It's more than us just showing up to church on Sunday. We have to find out where our gifts are and say, God, here I am. Here I am. Use me, God, for your glory. And I understand that the God I serve will provide all my needs. Do I have a witness? Watch this. Watch this. He says, to go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you today that you should surely perish. Now watch this. Go to Deuteronomy, no, I'm sorry. Go to Proverbs chapter 8. I want to show you something. Now here's the reason. Here's, here's this one of the teachings I did on the radio, and I, my first lesson on the radio, and, and, I, and this is foundational, okay? So we got the baby steps, right? We're tracking our financing. So, so as we go... Next week, I want to hear, okay, uh, how much you have, okay? Listen, remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to attack the envelope, the emergency envelope, whatever we got to do. If we got to have, if we got to have a garage, I tell you, you ain't got to do that no more. All you got to do is download the app called GroupMe, uh, not GroupMe, um, OfferUp, download OfferUp, okay? Right? OfferUp, right? Set up an account. Take some pictures of some stuff you ain't open yet at your house. I got a whole bunch of stuff I haven't opened yet, all right? Or some stuff in your garage that you want to get rid of. Put a low ball price on it and watch the money come. What you're trying to do is get rid of some stuff so you can get that envelope. Because if you're sitting here saying, man, I got a paycheck. I only got a certain amount of money. How am I going to get? I already know what you're thinking. How am I going to get this $1,000 in this envelope? You have stuff you don't use. How many of you got some stuff you don't use? She said, I use everything. You got some stuff. And I'm not talking about no bad. I'm talking about some good stuff. Amen. You got some good stuff around the house that you can take a picture of. You ain't got it. Listen, and here's what you're going to do now, okay? So here's the rules about selling on offer up. okay? Make sure you meet them close to a police station. Okay, amen, because a lady the other day met some people up and they busted up side of head and all that kind of stuff. So make sure you go right in front of the police station. You say, I'm going to meet you here in this parking lot in front of the police station. That's all you got to say. Amen. Don't come to my house. You ain't got to do none of that. Meet them there with the product and they exchange the money and boom. Now, if, if you don't want to do that and you're scary, you don't want to do that and you care about your life. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Listen, have a garage sale, okay? Do it the old-fashioned way. But I know some people who have liquidated stuff in days on eBay. You can do it on eBay and just ship it to them. See, this can turn into something for you, right? Watch this. And you wrap it up, you send it to them, and whatever the case may be. But here's the thing. You have them to pay for shipping, right? People are looking for stuff. People are always buying stuff. So these are strategies. These are strategies. Start looking around. You have a gold mine around you. And there's stuff that you don't really need. You got five cars in the driveway. Come on, y'all. And you can only drive one at a time. So what should you do? Liquidate. Get the emergency envelope funded by the end of the month. Can I... Y'all, y'all resisting that. I don't, I don't understand what's going on. Amen. Now listen, I told you Sunday, it's vain for you to rise early and retire late. You know what? We're overworked. But he says, if you were to trust me, I will give you in your sleep. And some of us are anxious. And in our anxiousness, watch this. We are overworking ourselves and we're tired. And our health is being affected. 
and our lives are being affected. Oh, I wish I had somebody tonight. Listen, saints, if we're going to win, we got to do make the principles. Go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. I want you to see something. Here's how you start winning with money. First step. I, wisdom, dwell with the what? And I find knowledge and what? Verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to what? Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverted mouth. I what? This is God. God says when you pop off with them F-bombs, I hate that. A perverted mouth. See, how we talk. Reflects how we live. I've been teaching that on, on, on Sunday mornings. Watch this. Verse 14. Counsel is mine. And sound wisdom. I am understanding. Power is mine. Now watch this. Chapter 8. Wisdom is describing himself or herself. It's a he. It's a she. Wisdom says, watch what wisdom says. Wisdom says, counsel is mine. See, here's the problem with most of us. We don't want no advice. We don't want no counsel with our money. Because it's my money. And because it's my money, that's a personal issue. But if you were to really sit down and get some counsel, you will gain wisdom so that you can win with money. Are you following me? Watch this. He says, counsel is mine. Sound wisdom and sound wisdom. I am understanding power is mine. Wisdom says, listen, not only do I have, not only do I have sound wisdom, but I have understanding. See, the problem is sometimes we have knowledge, but we don't have no understanding. And you could, listen, a lot of us know a lot of stuff. We done read about 50,000 books on budgeting. But we can't lift one finger to do anything about our situation right now. Come on and help me. How can you know so much Bible, but yet you can't apply it to your life? Amen. So I don't just need, listen, what we need, write it down. What we need if we're going to win with money is wisdom. We must seek wisdom. Now watch this wisdom piece. He says, by me. By who? By wisdom. There you go. Thank you, sister. By what? What verse is that? I just did something. What verse was that? 14. No. Uh, 15. 15. It says, by me, kings reign. And rulers decree what? By me, which is wisdom, princes rules and nobles and all who judge rightly. See what he's saying? He's saying the powerful are not powerful because they're powerful. They're powerful because they have gained what? Saints, I'm trying to help you with something tonight. You can have the envelope system. You can have all this. You can have all that. You can have that. Blah, 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 blah. But if you're not wise, if you're not wise, and I see a lot of us making unwise decisions with our resources. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch where I'm going with this. Look what he says next. Look at verse 17 for a minute. I what? Notice he uses the word love. I love those who what? So not only do you need wisdom, you must love wisdom. Love wisdom. In other words, change your affection from money to wisdom. And if you don't know how to get wisdom, let me tell you how you get it. You ask God for it. James chapter 1. 
James chapter 1 says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives without reproach. So you begin to ask God, you know what? I'm in this situation right now financially. Some of us, we got some, we got some serious financial stuff going on. We got overdue bills. We're behind on stuff. Uh oh. We, we, listen, we're paying late fee every month. Every month we're paying late fees. Come on, man. Don't pay half the bill. Pay the whole bill. And trust that God will provide all your needs. Oh, Lord. Are you with me? Don't make them rich with late fees. Listen, get, take overdraft off your account. Some of you say, I can't survive without that. Take it off. I dare you to do it. Log into your account on your phone and hit off. And trust God. Some of you wouldn't make it. The question is why? You're a child of God? Come on, somebody. You've been blood bought. Listen, somebody. You are you are a you are Abraham's seed. You are a child of the king. And there's no way that you and I should have to rely on overdraft. You know, you know, back in the day you would have to write the check early. Mm-hmm. And you know it would take about 17 days before it get there. And you know when you get paid, right? So you wrote the check anyways. And and let me tell you this. The banks are making every month six to eight million dollars a month. A month. That's just one bank. On overdraft fees. And the average person that says, watch this, seven out of ten people that says seven out of ten people will use it in a month. Which number are you? Yeah. That's statistics. That's fact. Come on, y'all. We can't live that way. We're not, listen, we're not borrowers. We're lenders. We're the head and not the tail. Come on, y'all. We shouldn't be struggling. We should not be struggling, y'all. And until we come to the to realization that, listen, that we are who we are in Christ and God has given us the power to get wealth. And not only that, but God has given us wisdom. Look what he says. Those who love me. I'm sorry. I love those who love me. And those who what? Diligently seek me with what? How much? Let me ask you something. How much time have you given to get wisdom? See, look at what you're pursuing. Lord, I'm not going to panic, but help me to develop wisdom. Diligently seek wisdom. Know how you seek, know how you get wisdom? Through counsel. Lord Jesus, I just said something. Through what? Through counsel. Hey, pastor, what you think about this? I wish I had somebody. Call a, fi- call a financial planner. You follow what I'm saying? I got a little bit of cheese. Let me, let me, how, what can I do with this? Where can I put this money so it can work for me? You understand what I'm saying? We See, people, millionaires don't think about money. They're wise. Look at, look at verse 18. Here's the thing. There's the reason why I say you have to pursue wisdom. Because when you have wisdom, you will make smart decisions. Not just with your money, but with your life. You will know what to, what to get involved in. You'll know what not to get involved in. But watch verse 18. He says, wisdom says, riches and what? Or what? Now, why would I not seek wisdom? Why would I not ask God for wisdom? Why would I not desire wisdom over money? See, we've been asking for the wrong thing. 
Lord, give us wisdom to find a million dollars. Can I get an amen? Give us wisdom, Lord. Because the Bible says that riches, watch this, is with wisdom. Look at, look at this. Riches and honor are with me. But watch this. Enduring what? Huh? Enduring what? So watch this. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. But look at what the writer says. The writer says if you start asking for wisdom, God is going to start giving you some stuff. And when he starts giving you some stuff, watch this, it will remain with you because you will be wise in how you spend it. You'll be wise in how you invest it. And when you have wisdom, you will put it in the right vehicle and it will, watch this, it will go in a circle. And guess what? Watch this now. You will release it. It will come back. You will release it. It will come back because that's what the word enduring means. The word enduring in the Hebrew, the word means it's a cycle that keeps going and going. But if you take your money and you pull up in the corner store and here you go scratching off, okay, that's not where it's going to return back to you. Give me, I want, I want 50, 25, 30, and uh, 99. And you think 50, 30, 20, and 99, okay, is going to get you rich overnight. That ain't going to work. You could have taken that 50, 30, 13, 20, and 99, and you could have taken all of that, that five, that, that fifty dollars you spent at the corner store, and put it in the offering basket, and it would have returned to you in your sleep. In your sleep. In my sleep, I woke up last week and I went and opened the mailbox, and the money that I needed was there. I was sleeping and it came to me. I ain't getting no second job. For what? For what? To get tired? The text says, when you have wisdom, money will come to you. Watch this. But it will remain with you. But not, oh, watch this. But watch this. Money will come to you. It will remain with you. Write this down when you have wisdom. You ready? You ready? 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 Catch this. I want you to take out your, your, your what's that? Catcher's mitt. All right. You ready for this one? Here it comes. Here it comes. You ready? It won't corrupt you. It won't what? Corrupt you. Because he says not only enduring wealth, but what? righteousness and you know what my definition of righteousness is right living and see a lot of us think that if we get more money we can live right but it all depends on how you got it if you got it with your wisdom and not the wisdom that God gave you it will corrupt you because all you're going to be doing is chasing after it and you'll never grab hold of it slow down will you please slow down relax come on somebody but we're running after it with pursuing it while minds is consumed all day about it. But here's the thing. God said, chill, man, relax. I got you. Ask him tonight, Lord, give me wisdom. And when you have wisdom, you're going to get money. No, I'm sorry. You're not going to get money. You're going to get wealth. There's a difference. 
you're going to get what? Wealth. And you know what that word wealth means? <laughs> the word wealth in the Hebrew, the word means enough. <laughs> And here's the thing, a person that's wise knows whether it's enough and when to say enough is enough. Do I have a witness? Now watch this. I'm going to show you something here in a second. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Keep me on time, somebody, okay? Watch this. Watch this. Because, you know, I get caught up in this thing here. We'd be here all night. Watch Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He says, my fruit is better than what? Even what? And my yield is better than what? This is wisdom. Wisdom now says, I'm more valuable than what you're pursuing. I thought all the time, all the time in my life, I thought that money was the answer. But when I gained wisdom, Lord, I want to tell you something. I'm a young man, but I got wisdom. God has given me wisdom beyond my... Listen, let me tell you something. He's given me... Don't let the grave fool you, okay? Listen. He's given me wisdom light years ahead of myself. Where I've taken a little and just started putting 25, 30, 25, 30. And then before you know it, I got 5,000. Then before you know it, I got 10,000. And I'm talking about cash. I ain't talking about in the bank. I'm talking about cash. And I'm talking on denying myself of those, those little stops at the store. Right? And every time I know, I say, okay, I was going to spend that, put it in my envelope. I was going to spend that, I put it in the envelope. And before you know it, I got ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 in cash. And whenever the church needs something, I got you. I got it. See, this is what I'm talking about when I say wisdom. God, listen, and that little 25, that little $10 you put in that envelope and say, all of a sudden it starts stacking. Because, you, because God has given you wisdom, and watch this, but you got a, such a peace of mind about it. Watch it, you're not thinking. About, God wants you to think on other things, like I told you last week. Listen, when problems arise, don't let it consume your mind. When you have wisdom... You have something better than gold and silver and gold. You have something better because watch this. With wisdom now, when something happens, you know how to navigate. Oh man, there's nothing like knowing what to do under pressure. Oh jeez, I just said something right there. There's nothing like knowing, watch this, watch this. My refrigerator went out. Okay? I got the emergency fund, right? But before I run to the emergency fund, I sit back and I start thinking. I'll never forget that happened to us. And it's, it's, it's amazing when you have wisdom what happens, right? Watch this. I had one guy to come out. He told me, hey, man, we got to take out the back. It's all messed up. They charged me $250 for the service call. He says it will cost me another 500 for them to replace the part. I said, hmm. I said, all right, let me think about that. I already paid him 250 Then he calls me and said, well, I'm not coming back. It's too far. I already paid. See, he thought he got me. But here's what the Lord, wisdom, here's what the Lord did. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Lord said, go unplug the refrigerator. I went in. I went behind, I unplugged the refrigerator. I left the refrigerator off for two days. Do you know when I plugged that refrigerator up, the only thing was wrong, the back stuff was frozen. It was just ice. And my refrigerator has been working now for another five years. He got me for 250, but wisdom got me out. But when you're not wise, if you're hasty, here you go. Just throwing money at it. Throwing money at it. 
And sometimes the reason you throw money at it, because you ain't been putting your money first in the kingdom. So God got to give it to a tither so that he can get it back to his kingdom. What could have cost you a hundred dollars doesn't cost you a thousand dollars because you used his and the mechanic tithes. Oh yeah. Yeah. You thought, oh, uh, no, that's just, ha- ha- uh, you know, accident. No, no, no. The mechanic knows God. And the mechanic is a faithful tither. So what God does, God says, okay, I can't get it through you. I'm going to get it through him. Money just exchanges hands. But God knows whose hands to put it in. And when you have wisdom, guess what? Not only do you get to keep it. You get to manage it. And then you get to release it. You know what's so beautiful about, about having money? When you have money, the, I think, the, I, here's what I believe. Not I think, I know. When you have it, right? I want you to think like this. Hopefully y'all develop a think. Some of you think like this. Watch this. It's a beautiful thing to release it. Watch this. And then it come right back to you. It's, it's crazy how that works. Because the moment you release it, it comes right back to you. Comes right back to you. The other day I gave somebody $20. And somebody walked up to me, I think it was you, and you gave me an envelope with $20 in it. You know what I'm saying? A love offering. I said, how quick do you return? (laughs) You know what I mean? I'm like, wow. I just gave that person, the person needs something. I said, here, here you go. It's all I got in my pocket. I was coming here tonight, right? I said, I said, you know what, man? I ain't got no money. I ain't got no money for offering tonight. What? Hold on a minute. Last two Tuesdays, I didn't have no, I had no cash in my pocket. You know what I mean? I said, uh-uh. I'm with my say. I said, let me grab me some. See, I think like that because I understand that, that, that releasing it is one of the greatest things you'll ever do. And some of us, we got to step up our game. You got to get off of just minimum. You will never reach maximum if you stay minimum. So it requires if you give 100, give 200. Hello, somebody. Why? Because it's an exercise of your faith. And then you say, well, I don't know if I have enough. But if you stop stopping at them stops you made all week, you'd have enough. Come on, say amen. Come on, come on. You got to say amen. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. That's why some of you won't kept check those receipts because you embarrassed what you've been spending all week. That's what he says. He says, enduring wealth is mine. Amen. He says, verse 20, I walk in the way of what? Righteousness. In the midst of the paths of what? Justice. Watch this. To endow those... Who what? Could it be you've been pursuing wealth the wrong way? He says to endow those who love me. That's verse 21. With what? Huh? Come on, let's talk a little bit. What do you think the text is saying? What do you think the text is saying, y'all? Uh, 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 uh. How many got to study Bible? Read what? Is... Uh, uh-uh. uh. That ain't what the text is saying. Why? No, 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 no. Because you love who? What? Who do you love? Who do you, no, no, no. Who do you love? Wisdom. Context. If you love wisdom and pursuing wisdom, he says wisdom will endow you with what? You know why? Because you're going to have the mind and the capacity to manage well. 
to know how to structure wealth, how to handle wealth. He says, but wealth belongs to me. God gave wealth, wisdom, the authority to manage wealth. Come on, help me somebody. Watch it. I can prove this. Solomon. He didn't have a good, you know, he had character flaws, but, but he was wise, man. And watch this. Solomon was so wise. Wisdom is what made him rich. We've been pursuing the wrong thing, y'all. We've been pursuing opportunities. We've been overworking ourselves. But if we were to simply exercise what James says in James chapter 1, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him what? Now remember what I told you about ask. Amen. It's either you're wishing for it or you're making a request for it. And we got to make what? A request and stop wishing. A lot of us wish we were rich. Amen. We wish we had this. We wish we had that. But guess what, y'all? Stop wishing and start asking. But what do you need to ask for? Let me show you something. Let me show you something. You ready? He says what? To endow those who love me with wealth. Then that I may do what, y'all? Huh? Do you know what treasuries is? Your bank account. The word carries the idea in the, in the Hebrew storehouse. You hear what I said? The what? The storehouse. Some of us, we don't even have a storehouse. We're living paycheck because in the natural, we think, oh, I got to do this, a better job, a better this. God can take what you're doing right now. He can, listen, let me ask you this now. If what you're doing right now is not enough, something is wrong with your overhead and you need wisdom. There's a lot of ways to cut back. I said this on the radio station. There's a lot of ways to cut back. Call your, listen, you can't watch 500 channels. I showed, I showed a person the other day how to get a TV, right? Right? And watch everything on television, right? Legally for free. Over 150, over 170 channels. Pluto TV is free. You go make a one-time investment. Watch this. One-time investment, right? Watch this. Watch this. We're paying cable, right? Huh, right? We're paying internet, right? Okay? Right? So you go get what's called a Roku TV. Right? You hook it up to Roku Oh, oh, you can get a smart TV, a Samsung or whatever. Um, yeah, Samsung, right? Watch this. You hook up the TV and you download the apps. I like the Roku TV because you got options. All right? You download Pluto. It's called Pluto TV, just like it sounds. Just like it sounds. Pluto TV. There is news on there. There's sports on there. Okay? And all these things, right? You, you downsize your, your package. To the bare minimum, if you got direct TV, okay? Watch this. So that way you can catch the other games and stuff like that. And the same apps like uh, ESPN and stuff is on the Pluto TV and you're watching through the internet. And your bill, so, so my cable bill is like 50 bucks a month now. 50 bucks. $50. And I got Pluto, listen, I was paying ten ninety nine per box in five rooms. I'm like, man, please. I bought, I made the investment, I made the sacrifice, is what I did. I spent $200 for each TV. This is about four years ago. No, maybe two years ago. Th two years ago or three years ago? Two years ago, right? Watch this. Every TV upstairs <laughs> is on Roku. And they watch Pluto. And Pluto has all the channels for free. 
See, there's ways to cut the cord. There's way to cut back. But some, watch this. And sometimes we have to cut. That's wisdom. You cut back. I'm looking at it like this. I'm paying these people forever. Forever. And I'm like, listen, I'm tired of paying everybody forever. So I'm like, listen. Seriously, right? I mean, seriously, right? Now watch this. The truth. Let's talk truth right now, right? How many of you got Netflix? You got Netflix? Watch this. You got Netflix, but then you got that big cable bill. Does that make sense? And where do you watch Netflix on? Now, when you, when you get the smart TV, guess what? You can watch Netflix on that TV. It's automatically on that TV. That's it. Right? Now, watch, now this, this is just stuff, y'all. That if we were to use wisdom, this is what I'm talking about with wisdom. And then here's what I did. Here's what I did, y'all. I was, I I think I was saving $70 a month on my cable bill after I did the cut, right? I took that $70 for one year and I put it in an envelope and I was able to save. That's how I win. It's not that I have thousands of dollars. It's not like I'm a millionaire, but I got wisdom. So I am wealthy. And that's what we need. We need what we need wisdom so that our treasuries will be filled.